Okay. Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome to the March 2022 GEO Community Call. Uh, today we have a pretty short agenda. Um, I'm just going to talk about the, the latest changes to the complex script support that I've been working on for the last like five months. And uh, then we'll have some time for questions and we'll see what comes up. Uh, so let me share my screen. Can we all see this? Can anyone see this? I'm going to take the silence as, as a good sign. Um, I'm only seeing a frozen image of you. I've been seeing that for a few minutes. Maybe it's just me. Anyone else? I can uh, restart my screen share. Any change? Nope, I'll just reload. Hey, people in chat, do you see anything? <laughs> yes, I can see it now. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, in my previous update on RTL text, uh, I had this type called text.langconfig, and it would be part of your material theme. Um, and that is no longer how language information is going to propagate through Geo. Um, putting it at the theme layer meant that if you used a different theme, you would have to devise a new mechanism for moving it around. Um, and essentially, every Geo application probably wants to know what language the system is in and what direction text should flow. So what we're looking at here is the IO system package um, where I've added this type called locale. Um, locale has the kind of standardized string language tag and the uh, direction that the text flows. And These two values are essentially everything that the text shaper actually needs. So uh, the way that these propagate um, is that they are now part of the layout.context. Um, in the future, what we would like to do is have Geo automatically detect um, your system language, uh, probably using similar logic or the same logic as the pref package that Lucas contributed to Geo X, um, and populate this for you out of information that arrives in the system.frame event. So when you called uh, layout.newContext, it would automatically populate the locale. But right now, it will not do that. <laughs> it was uh, complicated enough just to get this information consumed correctly. So that's what we're focusing on right now. Um, so in your application, if you want to take advantage of these features, you'll want to, after constructing a context, populate the locale with uh, the correct language and direction. Um, and then the text shaper accepts a system.locale as one of its parameters, um, meaning that it can correctly determine the direction the text is going to follow. Previously, you also needed to give it uh, a writing system. And that is no longer the case. Um, now in, whoops can't type font, open type. There is a secret internal open type package now where all of the shaping work happens. 
And this, this isn't necessarily the final way we're going to do this, but for now, as the shaper is processing your input sequence of runes, it checks what writing system each of these UTF-8 code points belongs to. And then um, at the paragraph level of granularity, says what writing system is the majority of this paragraph in and uses that. Um, so it saves you from having to specify. Um, later on, we'll probably want to do something more sophisticated here. But this is how it works for now. Uh, the public APIs for all of the widgets uh, are essentially unchanged. Um, they each have a, they are each accepting the lang config, not lang, sorry. <laughs> They're each accepting the system.locale from the layout.context that they receive at layout time. Um, so if you needed to override the language on a widget by widget basis, the way to achieve that would be to modify the GTX immediately before laying out the widget. Um, but yeah, the I previously exposed this uh, document function and the shaping API that uh, it is kind of the entry point into. But we probably want to restructure that some so that you can lay out things smaller than documents. Uh, so for the time being, this API is going to live in internal until we find uh, a more granular API that we're happy with. Also, big chunks of this logic are probably going to move to the GoText typesetting repository, in which case you know they won't be in GeoCore at all. Um, so for you, the only thing to be aware of, um, the only kind of big thing to be aware of is that when you're working with text widgets in right to left text contexts, after my changes, um, the ax sorry, not axis, the alignment of that text is going to be relative to the current uh, text flow direction. So if you do align text to start, which is you know the zero value, so that's going to be, unless you override it, what every label and every widget is going to use um, in a right to left language. Now that's going to be on the right edge instead of the left, which I think is semantically correct. But uh, since we didn't used to honor that, um, that'll seem like a change. Or it is a change, but hopefully it's a change for the more correct. Um, I mean, it doesn't look any different than uh, last time you saw it. Oh, well, yeah. Um, so I think that's essentially it. I'd be happy to take some questions if you have any. We're hearing none. Uh, are there any other things that people wanted to ask questions about during the recorded portion of this call? Oh, that's a good one, Lucas. Um, so as of this moment, no, the text shaper doesn't surface uh, granular control over things like letter spacing. Um, however, after these changes land, um, I would be happy to work with you to figure out how to make that happen because we we should be able to. Uh, similarly, like adjustments to line height 
um, are something that I would like to see. Uh, yeah, so this this change set does not enable that. Um, and this change set does actually lose some capability. Like initially, we're going to lose font fallback support. Um, but that's because it just needs to be rebuilt on a new foundation. Um, and then once we have it back, we should be we should be good. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of capability that this change set gives us the foundation for that uh, you know is not included in these changes because it would make this even more complicated <laughs> to merge than it already is. Like uh, we'll be able to lay out. You know, we we don't have the code for this, but it's it's pretty easy to add to what we have now for things like um, vertical text layout. If you wanted a label that ran top to bottom um, in English or in uh, say a script more suited to it, like Japanese, um, where they have a whole you know form that is intended to be read in that way. Um, we have kind of the the bones of the infrastructure to do that now. Um, the changes to support that should be pretty minor. Um, we don't intend to support vertical text editing in the editor, though, because it's that's complicated. <laughs> um, yeah. Definitely looking forward to some of the cool text use cases. Um, and I think we'll have to, we're going to have to redo our rich text package some because um, it currently relies on some implementation details of uh, the old text shaper. Um, but the new capabilities are going to to hopefully make our rich text implementation quite a bit better. Um, I'm excited for what we can do there. Anything else? It seems to me with, um, um, I, I have reviewed your patches once, your new ones. Um, now that right to left, Uh, editor in light, right to left mode is such it's it's relatively easy to do. Will it, in your opinion, be relatively easy to do uh, bi-directional text as well? I I don't know. Um, to do bi-directional text correctly will require us to um, every time we traverse a line of text, currently we get to assume that that traversal is at least monotonically changing the position of the cursor in one or the other direction. Um, and once we have bidirectional text, that will stop being true. You know, you might be moving the cursor left, um, and then it will jump very far to the left, and then the next few move movements will move it to the right, and then it will jump to the other side. If you have, you know, a, a string of text in the other language progression embedded, um, so I, I think maybe. All we have to do is get the kind of comparison operator correct. Um, you know, now that we've factored the editor core code into essentially just a few helpers that compare relative positions in the text. Um, but it's also, uh, until we've done it, it's really hard to, to answer. I think that the current factoring of the editor should make it way easier. Um, but 
I, I don't know if it'll be, you know, I, I'm pretty sure it won't be as simple as the current RTL implementation because that was, that was just inverting the x-axis uh, of a few operations. And this is um, redefining the nature of the x-axis to be uh, less consistent. Like, I'm not sure that within a bidirectional text context, you can legitimately compare the x-axis position anymore. Um, I think that that loses some of its semantics. We'll see. Um, we'll still need to, we don't have to solve that problem until the uh, Go text project has their bidirectional stuff or has our bidirectional stuff uh, done. Um, yeah. I wish I could say, yes, it'll be easy now. But uh, the best I can do is maybe. Any other questions or thoughts or stuff people want to share? OK, well, I think uh, we can end the recording here. Um, thanks, guys, for attending. <laughs>